Welcome to another episode of Homestead Gardening in the Texas Gulf Coast. Today I will show you how to use the Fugal Culture style of composting to repurpose organic materials and create a mounded raised bed you can start planting on today. They say everything's bigger in Texas and this Fugal Culture raised bed is no exception. Hugel culture means hill or mound culture in German, and the style starts with woody materials, covers them with compostable materials, and is topped with a layer of soil to form a mounded raised garden bed without digging or constructing walls. The Hugel culture technique uses a direct burial layering method, and free organic material that you find around your property to create a new fresh raised bed that's going to decompose over time slowly and allow you to plant in right away. Okay, let's back up a minute. I know there is no way that I'm going to convince you to build a giant hill in your backyard in just a few minutes, but I bet I can convince you to do it on a smaller scale in a raised planter just like this. And that's exactly what I'm going to do at the end of this episode. Houston is known to have areas flood easily during heavy rain events, and we have a high water table, which can drown the roots of many plants. The area I've selected is a high spot. On each side, water flows parallel and picks up speed in large rain events, which means any bed we place in this area needs to be parallel to the natural water flow to reduce washout. Additionally, this location has compacted, poor quality soil, which has made root growth difficult for any trees I've attempted to grow here. This bed is being constructed at the beginning of the cool season, which will help reduce the chances of native grasses and weeds completely taking over. But just in case, we're starting off our no-dig style hugel culture bed by covering the surface with cardboard to suppress more resilient weeds. Next, larger pieces of branches and logs are laid closely together to reduce gaps, and any gaps that need to be filled are filled with smaller branches. Our third layer includes compostable materials, and I've chosen grass clippings because I had an abundance available, but you can also add dried leaves, straw, or anything from the kitchen compost pile. Our fourth layer adds a finished leaf mold compost, and at the same time, this will help give more structure to the mound. For more information on how to make your own finished compost or where to find the leaf mold compost I'm using, check out the informational links below and my introductory episode on easy and affordable composting. The bed will be topped off with soil, and I chose to mix native soil with a garden soil used from the previous season. We've added our final layer to our Google Culture bed, but it's not complete yet. We actually want to make sure that our soil is stabilized and we don't have erosion during the next few months. And the way to do that is to plant a cover crop. On these steep walls, what we actually want to do is create little ledges and tiers and then plant our cover crop inside or on top of those ledges. And because we are in the fall in Houston and moving into the cool season, we want to plant something like a crimson clover or a barley to stabilize the soil. If you love this technique but don't have a lot of space to try it in, you can use the same style to fill a constructed raised bed planter. There are two suggestions I'd like to make that I think you should do differently when applying this method to a raised bed instead of a mound like you saw earlier in the episode. First, the size of your woody materials should be smaller limbs and branches broken into pieces instead of larger limbs and logs like what was shown in the earlier mounding example. Second, top the bed with a mulch layer instead of planting a cover crop so that you can keep moisture in the bed. Continue to water this bed until you're ready to plant. This bed will sink as it decomposes, but you can still plant right away by pulling back the mulch and starting your seeds. Make sure to select a type of plant that won't be challenged by the branches below. Thanks so much for learning with me. For more information on today's episode, check out my podcast at the link below. 
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can join me in the garden each week as I introduce you to new ideas and interesting plant selections just for you. Really? Another plane? I don't even see it. This is taking forever.